Hey everybody, welcome back to my Star Wars channel. My name is David and today I wanna to talk to you about setting up your game board for Star Wars Outer Rim. We would be honored if you would join us. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for being here. Make sure before we start, you hit like, hit subscribe, hit those notification buttons so that you're alerted every single time I do a review or a video. I don't want to talk too much because this video is kind of long. Uh, we're going to go through the entire setup process for Star Wars Outer Rim. I'm assuming already that you've already purchased it. You already own it. Um, here's what I want you to do. Take the shrink wrap off the box, open it, start punching out all those little pieces and then start grouping them into like uh, images and objects. Uh, backs of decks of cards should look the same all the way down. Uh, similar looking pieces, colorings should be grouped together. And then when the next part of the video starts, I'm gonna walk you through setting up the entire game. And as we're setting it up, you're also gonna learn some rules along the way, learn how to play the game. Make sure that everyone who's gonna play the game is watching this with you, so we're kinda of all on the same page together. I'm not gonna cover every single rule because that would take forever, and there's other videos that already do that. I'm only interested in helping you set the game up, giving you enough, giving you enough that you can just start playing the game once this video stopped. You'll have enough information. I'll, I'll tell you just enough that you'll be able to start playing the game I'm super excited about Star Wars Outer Rim. I love this game. I hope you will too. Let's get playing. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do, like I said earlier, is punch everything out. Punch all the money out, the chips, the cards, everything. Unwrap all of it, and then start grouping it together into like-looking objects. Like, you can pretty much look at things and say, okay, these all go together, these all go together. Then you're gonna wanna clear off a large space. Uh, when we first played this, we played this on a dining room table and literally uh, <laughs> it took about three quarters of the dining room table. So you're going to need a big space. The first thing I would suggest is that you're going to lay down the game board. The game board looks like this. These are the pieces of it. Okay. And you have one, two, three, four, five, six. You'll have six of these curved parts and then these two end caps, these two end pieces. And this is how you're gonna lay them down. You're gonna start on the far left and you're gonna look for the planet that says Ord Mandel, okay? It says Ord Mandel down at the bottom. That is piece number one. And the planet right above uh, Ord Mandel or off to the left is Cantonica, okay? So that is piece one. Second piece is Lothal. So it looks like it says Lothal, right? But it's Lothal and then the planet next to it is Mon Calamari. So you're gonna lay that one, just lock it in place next to that. The third one is Kessel, and it's the one that has kind of like the purple uh, cloud around it. That's piece number three. Piece number four is Nal Hutta, and right above that is Tatooine, of course, home planet of Luke Skywalker. And the next planet is Naboo, and the planet on its piece is Ryloth. And then the last piece is Takadana, and then right above that is the Ring of Kafreen. Now you're gonna notice on your far left end and your far right end, you can still put on two more pieces, and that's for these little end caps. On the far left, you're gonna put the one that has the rebel symbol, and then the one that has what looks like, I'll call it a flower, okay? And you're gonna put that on the far left, and the one on the far right, you're gonna put the imperial end cap on, and the symbol next to it, that is the symbol for the Hut clan. We'll talk about what these four symbols are and what they mean just in a second. But that's your that's your arc, okay? That's your game board right there. Next thing that you are gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna put all the cards, the little game cards, down in the center where they all go. All right, so these are the market decks and there's six different market decks that you can uh, put down on the table. You're gonna shuffle each deck just in itself, right? Just don't don't mix them together, keep them all separate. And you're gonna lay them down on the table from left to right, and you're gonna put them down so that the light, there's a light kind of emanating from the bottom of the deck, that's gonna go towards you, okay? So the first one is Bounty, that has the kind of like the gear items on it. The second one is Cargo, and that has the blue square. The next one is Mods, that's the green one that has the wrench on it. Then you're gonna put down the 
one for jobs. That's a, that's a hand holding three blocks. Then you have luxury, which is the yellow one with the kind of like trapezoid diamondy shape on it. And then the last one is ships. And that one's the gray one that has the slave one. And those will go right there in that section. Next are the encounter decks. One of the phases of your turn, your last phase, is to encounter. And so this is, these are the encounter decks. And each encounter deck is going to coincide with the two planets on the game board. So for instance, if you pick up the Ring of Caffrine and Takadana, you pick up that encounter deck, you're going to lay that just above the Ring of Caffrine and Takadana on the game board. So you'll have a, a counter deck for Ryloth and Naboo, and those will go right above their corresponding planet. You'll have an encounter deck for Kessel and the Maelstrom. You put that above its corresponding planets. You'll have an encounter deck for Cantonica and Ord Mandel. Stick that one above. And then lastly, you'll have an encounter deck for Mon Calamari and Lothal. So all your decks will be in place, but you'll still have some cards left out. So let's talk about the cards that are left. Uh, first of all, you'll have a purple deck that what looks like uh, a protocol droid on there or a C-3PO and you're saying, well, where do these go? This deck is specifically for a solo play. So let's say you're going to play all by yourself against nobody. You'd use these purple cards to be the opponent. And I'll make a separate video that will talk about how to use this deck. But for now, I'm assuming you're playing with other people. So you don't need that deck and you can put it aside. The next stack of cards is the data bank of cards. And these are the cards that are numbered one to 92. 92 should be on top, one should be on the bottom. You're gonna leave these face down. And the data bank cards are kind of like a build your own adventure deck. Throughout the course of the game, uh, there'll be instances where it says, look at card 11, or look at card four, or look at card 50. And that'll be you going through the data bank cards and finding that corresponding number, pulling it out, and then just doing what it says. A lot of this game is just doing what the cards tell you to do. The steps to play this game are actually very easy. The rules are very easy. Most of this game is just reading the cards and then following the directions. Don't shuffle the data bank cards. Keep them in order from 1 to 92 and just place them anywhere off to the side where everyone will be able to have access to them. The next deck of cards is the nav points. And it says nav points right on it, okay? These are also encounter cards. These are encounter cards for all of the yellow circles that you see on the game board. So all those yellow circles are steps on the game board. So let's say during your turn, uh, you can move five spaces. Those yellow circles and the planets are the spaces. So you'd count one, two, three yellow circles, four planet, five yellow circle, okay? That's your character moving across the game board. If you land on a yellow circle and not a planet, for your encounter phase, you'll grab one of these cards and that'll be your encounter uh, in space. And on the other side of it, it'll say, uh, read this section if there's a patrol or read this section if there isn't a patrol. And we'll get to that, but you're only gonna read half of this card. The next stack of cards are the character cards. This shows you all the different characters that are in this game. Of course, you have Bosk from Empire Strikes Back, Lando from Empire Strikes Back, Ketsu Anyo, who's from the cartoons, Dr. Aphra, she is from the comic books, IG-88 from Empire Strikes Back, Boba Fett from Empire Strikes Back, Han Solo from pretty much just every movie, and Jin Erso from Rogue One. You'll notice that these character cards are double-sided. When you start, you're gonna start with the side that says, flip this card at the bottom. Somewhere at the bottom, it should say, flip this card. You will start with that side. And let's just look at the character card really quick, just so that you get yourself familiar with it. The red number, that is how many dice you will roll if you are doing a arm-to-arm -arm combat or a physical combat, like you against another person. You will roll that many dice. And the number underneath it, the yellow number, that is your health. So if your health is four and you have four hits, then you're dead. Underneath that is some uh, game context. Each character has their own special skill. And again, you just read that special skill and you apply it during the game. You'll also have a personal goal. 
So make sure that you're doing your personal goal throughout this game. You might say, okay, what am I supposed to do in the game? What's my objective? Your objective is your personal goal. Read your personal goal. Each person has their own special one. And then all the way down at the bottom, it says uh, influence or tactics or piloting or tech or stealth. Those are your skills. And everybody has different skills. They bring different skills to the table. Also down at the bottom, there's an indicator about how you will start. So I'm pulling out Jen Urso's card, and it says setup card number 92. That means I'm going to go to the databank cards, find card 92, and then it'll tell me. Her starting point is Tatooine, so I'm going to put my character uh, Standy on Tatooine. And then underneath that, it says job. So Jen Urso now has a job to do, and again, you're going to read that, and it'll tell you where to go and what to do. And she also has the personal goal. So now as I start the game, I have both a personal goal that I'm supposed to accomplish and I have a job. And throughout the game, you'll be able to acquire more jobs and bounty uh, as the game continues. Next, you'll have a reference card. Uh, each player gets a reference card. And this is just so that you remember what to do on your turn. And it's really self-explanatory. There's not a lot to read into this and I'll go over it really quickly. So on the side that says player turn, every single player has three steps to their turn. The first step is the planning step. And it says, choose one. You will either move your ship, the amount of spaces that your ship can go, or you'll gain 2000 credits, or you'll remove all the damage from your ship or your person and recover. But you can only do one of those things. If you have died in the previous turn, let's say, you'll recover all your damage and you'll pay 3,000 credits to come back to life. Second thing you can do is an action step and it says perform any or all. So here you have some leeway. You can do all kinds of things. You can deliver cargo, you can deliver a bounty, you can go to the market only if you're on a planet. If you're on one of the yellow circles, okay, you can't go to the market. But if you're on a planet, of course, the market is on a planet, right? The market's not out in space. You can discard the top card of a market deck, which means you could recycle that top card. So let's say, you know, you're looking at the tools deck, you don't like that tool, you can put that tool on the bottom of the deck and flip the next one. So that's something you can do. You can buy, of course, one thing from the market, or you can trade cards with a player in your space, should you wish. Lastly, you will do an encounter. You cannot skip the encounter step, okay? You can skip the market. Of course, you don't need to go to market if you don't want to, but you can't skip the encounter. You'll either fight a patrol ship, if there is one in your space, you'll resolve an encounter card, so either the ones that are on the planets or the ones that are on space, or you'll resolve a contact token. All right, so there's more cardboardy punchy things. We haven't even uh, gotten through all of them, right? So first of all, you'll have a pile of money. These are all the credit tokens. They come in uh, denominations of 1,000, 5,000, and 10,000. Uh, I just put them all in a big pile and just put them at the top of my game board just so that they're within reach of everybody. If you want one person to be the bank, they can be, but I just leave them on the table. Uh, if you want to buy a little box that organizes them, go for it, but you know... This is just, you know, what everyone's going to get. And as the game begins, each person will get a set amount of money. So really quickly decide who's going to be player one, two, three, and four, if you have that many. Uh, player one receives 4,000 credits. Player two receives 6,000 credits. Player three receives 8,000 credits. And player four receives 10,000 credits. All right, so you've chosen your character and you have your money. Now you need to set up your player board, your player space. And this is where more of the area of your table is gonna take up room, okay? Because you need one of these player boards and you're gonna just pick the color that you like the best. And then you'll also need one of these little white pegs and you're gonna place the peg in the zero hole, okay? And the goal of this game is to get your peg all the way to 10. Once you go all the way to 10, that is 10 fame and 10 fame wins the game. A short game is eight, playing to eight fame, and a long extended game would be to 12. But notice that there's a little marker in 10 that says this is where you stop. You'll stick your character in this cutout right here. And remember to place them face up on the side that says flip this card. And then you will each select a spaceship. You're gonna select a Starcraft. So your beginning Starcraft is either gonna be the G9 Rigger or 
the G1A Starfighter. And you're going to flip it over. Every character is going to get the same starting ship. And really, all you're going to ask yourself is, do I want to go fast or do I want to fight? Uh, the G9 Rigger can move up to six spaces. See that? Six spaces. It has two attack, so two dice will roll. It has three shields. The G1A Starfighter can move five spaces. It has three dice attack and four shields. Both ships can carry one crew member down at the bottom, and you'll stick the crew member underneath that. It'll have one mod and one cargo. And as the game progresses, you'll get more money, and of course, you'll be able to buy new ships from the market. Whatever ship is face up in the market deck, that's the ship that is for sale. And your ship card goes on the left side of your player board. One more thing to put in your player board, these little reputation tokens. There's a green one, a red one, a yellow one, and a blue one, and you're gonna stick them in the slots where they go. So Hut goes first, then Syndicate, then Imperial, then Rebel. If you stick them all in the middle, that is called neutral. If they raise one up, that's positive. If they go down one, that's negative. There's, there's only three positions. You don't, they don't move in gradients up and down. And the way you know how you start is down at the bottom. So let's use Jen Urso again as in our example. It says negative Imperial reputation. That means all of her uh, markers are at neutral and her Imperial one is negative. And then throughout the game, these will go up and down. These will go up, down, in the middle, and your reputation will change, either positive or negative, throughout the game. And that will affect how the cards play, and that will affect how you deal with the AI. All right, a couple more pieces, a couple more tokens. Uh, these yellow tokens are the goal tokens. The goal tokens are uh, things that you can use to track your personal goal. So remember, you have a personal goal, and sometimes it'll say you have to do two of these or three of these. You have a little wheel right next to your character, and when you accomplish one of your goals, you'll just stick one of these goal tokens there. That's just a way for you to keep track so that you know uh, how close you are to finishing your goal. The other piece that's left is you have contact tokens and you have patrol tokens. Let's do patrol tokens next. The patrol tokens are kind of like an AI, okay? They are a alternate player that is moving and interacting with you as the game progresses. And so you will have a patrol ship for the huts, the syndicates, the Imperials, and the rebels. And this is really where your uh, positive and negative and neutrality fit in. You are going to punch all these out and you're gonna separate them by symbol and you're gonna lay them out from one, two, three, and four. Notice the little white dots on the backside here. Four is on the bottom, then you stack three on top of it, two on top of it, and one top on top of it. Put the Imperials on their symbol on the end cap. Put the huts next to it on their symbol on the end cap. Go to the other end cap, put all the rebels there, and then all the syndicates there. And as the game starts, you're gonna take the first ship, flip it face up, and stick it on the first yellow nav point right above it. So these ships are also gonna move around the game board with you, okay? They're gonna be out there with you. And you're gonna notice that they also have uh, a dice for uh, rolling, for attack, and some of them have a dollar amount, so if you destroy their ship, you get that amount of money. Some of them have a fame number. So let's say you destroy one uh, and you get one fame from it, and that'll be your reward. All right, so how do the patrol tokens move? Well, they move two different ways. Uh, the first will be uh, the encounter cards. So you could be at an encounter card, either out in space or at a planet, and the encounter card might tell you to move one of the patrol tokens or move it to you. The second way the patrol tokens move is through the marketplace. So let's say you buy something, you take the top card off the market card, off the market card deck, you put it on the bottom and you flip the next card up. Once you flip the next card up, you should immediately move the patrol token. It'll tell you which faction to move, and it'll tell you how many spaces to move it. And you're always going to move it in the direction towards you, the person who just purchased something from the market. The best way and the fairest way to do this is to have somebody else move it for you. Don't move it yourself, because you will always move it in a way that would be uh, to your advantage have another player uh, move it for you. 
also have another player roll for the patrol tokens. If it's their turn to fight, or if it's an enemy's turn to fight, always have another player roll for the enemy. Don't roll for yourself, that keeps it fair. Lastly, we have the contact tokens. These are other characters that are in play that'll either be people that you can pick up and use for your crew. They will also be people that are bounty, people that you're looking for, or they could just be people out there in the universe that are meant to cause you trouble. You're gonna turn them all upside down so that you can't see them, shuffle them all up so that you don't remember who they are, and then you're gonna look at the back side and match them up against the squares, the open spaces on the game board. So let's say you have a contact token that has a green border and two dots. You're gonna put him or her on an empty space where there's two green dots. Or you have a yellow frame with three dots, you're gonna find an empty space where there's three dots, you're gonna put him on that space. So there's a lot of things now on the game board, <laughs> right? And you got all your chips in place, you got your character, you have your starting databank card, you have your standee, ready to go on their planet, that there is their starting planet, and you have dice ready to play. And you're thinking, all right, now what do I do with these dice? Here's a couple more things that are gonna help you while you play. The first is, let's go back to your reference card. You have your reference card. If you flip it over to the other side, this is a side that you won't use as much, but it's got some notes on there to help you. First up at the top, it shows you ways to gain fame. Okay, that's what you want to do. You want to get your fame all the way to 10. So it shows you different ways you can do that. And the second thing down there is it says skill test. So this is your cheat sheet for when it says test this or test that, right? You're always going to test one of your character skills or you're going to test a skill that they don't even have. Let's go back to Jen Erso again. Maybe it says test tech. Well, she doesn't have tech. So that means you're going to roll dice. So every time it says to test a skill, you're going to roll two of your dice. And down here at the bottom is your cheat sheet. So if you are completely unskilled, you don't have that skill, you've got to roll that asterisk with the empty space. Okay, that is a critical. If you are skilled, let's say you have the skill, you can roll either asterisk shape. If you're highly skilled, you can obviously roll either asterisk shape or the I. But if you roll a blank, of course, that is a zero. You will also roll the dies for combat. And your second quick reference guide is on the back of your learn to play book. You've got two books and to keep them handy, find out who's gonna be your, uh, <laughs> your dungeon master or uh, whoever's gonna be in charge of the rules. There's a rules reference book. On the back is an index by alphabetic order. So if you just wanna know what ship combat is like or what happens when you're defeated, or you want to know about mods or nav points or how to break a tie, just look at the index and it's going to have all the answers for you right there. You don't even need me. You got the book, you're ready to play. Your second quick reference is on the back of your learn to play book. Keep that face up. That shows all your market cards, shows you exactly what you get, tells you exactly how to handle combat, tells you how to handle skill tests, shows you what all the different factions are. It tells you what all the icons means and it gives you some frequently asked rules. Those two booklets are gonna be your life's blood as you play this game. All right, you are ready to go. You don't need me anymore. Uh, player one that's just gonna take their turn. They're gonna go through their uh, player turn. They're gonna do their planning step, then their action step, and then their encounter step. And then you're gonna move on to the next person. And literally, as you play this game, you will figure it out. You will. You will figure it out just by playing it. But once the board has now been set up, this is gonna be so much easier to do. And I'm so happy to have helped you. Please ask me any questions down below. I'll be more than happy to answer you uh, with anything you've got. It's a wonderfully fun game. I love it. Thanks for watching this. And I'll go back to close this out. All right, so I hope that puts you off and running. Uh, like I said, you could just start playing right now as long as you have your rule book next to you. And you know, whenever someone says, well, what do we do when we do this? You've got the rules right there uh, to go back to. You don't need to sit here and watch a two hour tutorial or a two hour playthrough. The best way to learn this game is to play it. And if you have any questions along the way, feel free to post them down below. I will do my best to answer every single one of them. I don't wanna be one of those channels where people just type questions into an empty void. I'm here to help. 
That's why this channel is here. It's, I'm here to help you. So yes, any questions about gameplay, feel free to post them below. Thanks for watching, guys. May the force be with you. I'll see you next time. Bye.